of the scripture today is Galatians chapter 2 verse 9 and James chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. And recognizing the grace that had been given to me, James and Shephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship so that we might go to the Gentiles and they too the circumcised. James, a bondservant of God and for Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Consider it all joy, my brethren. When you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Amen. On behalf of uh, beloved senior pastor, uh, Pastor Myung Ho Chung, the president of United Holiness Church of Jesus Christ in Africa, will preach under the title James, reputed to be a pillar. Let's welcome him with Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. I thank Shalom Choir and Nishi Orchestra's praise and performance. I also thank a Power Worship Dance Team for your a special dance. How blessed you are, Mami members. And I'm now standing on this altar, so I'm so happy. <laughs> Everyone, did you ever think about the Father God's providence of reaping two children for such long, uh, incountable, incountable years? He had such profound providence, and in the end, he would get two children with whom he would live forever. Thinking of his such great plan, we cannot forget the love of the shepherd who let us know such providence. And Father God had senior pastor dismissed from the denomination. It was to bless him back in 1999. Why do you think God gave us such a trial? It was also to bless us. And in 2018, why did God allow us to go through this great trial? It was to give us great blessing. Let's give all things and glory to Father God. Thank you. In the Old Testament times, Father God chose Moses to lead the Israelites into the land of Canaan in order to lead many people with a lot of sins, He sent Jesus as a Savior. And in the end time, which is most important, in order to reap true children, Father God and our shepherd when Peter said to Jesus Jesus you shouldn't die and Jesus said Jesus told him to follow him carry the cross and follow him and even right now Father God wants you to carry the cross of the Lord and cross of the shepherd and I also want to carry the cross in Africa and Father God Father God continues to put us in trial so that we can become his true children true spiritual warriors this is 
by Father God's love, thinking about such love, our shepherd has made a sacrifice with all of his life and to this day um, with gratitude for his love let us give let us applaud uh, thinking about the shepherd's love and this is as we celebrate the holiday new year holiday let me say senior pastor and you say senior pastor love you let us start off with this beloved senior pastor I love you thank you all I thank you, Mrs. Bong Yim Lee, our mother of prayer who's prayed for us and harbored us with warm love. My thanks also go to acting senior pastor Sujin Lee, who is devoting herself with all of her heart, and to all the pastors and church workers. Lastly, I'd like to thank all the mommy members for your warm love and prayer. Brothers and sisters, reading the New Testament, I was impressed by the passage which mentions that James was reputed to be a pillar. It was about five years ago that it happened. Today's passage says, And recognizing the grace that had been given to me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of the fellowship so that we might go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Acts chapter 21 verses 17 through 19 provide a scene where the Apostle Paul came back to Jerusalem from his third mission trip and reported to James and the elders about the things which God had done among the Gentiles. Seeing James described as a pillar in the church of Jerusalem I figured that it would be inspiring to explore who he is and what his ministry was like. So I've decided to deliver a message under the title, James, Reputed to be a Pillar. In the New Testament, we find three individuals named James. The name James means to follow, to be behind. This name derives from Jacob, the father of Israel, and it is the same as the Greek name, Jacobus. The first person named James from the New Testament is the son of Alphaeus. He is included on the list of Jesus' 12 disciples as we find in Matthew chapter 10, verses 2-4. through 4. But the Bible has no record of his ministry. Acts, uh, next, we have Apostle James, who was the brother of Apostle John. Uh, from the Bible, we find that he was one of the three disciples whom Jesus loved. His father was Jebedee and his mother, Salome. While he was fishing near the shores of Galilee with his brother John, he was called by Jesus, as were Peter and his brother. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 21 and 22, we find a scene where Jesus walked along the Sea of Galilee and found James, John, and their father Jebedee mending their nets. As Jesus called James and his brother John, they left the boat and their father to follow him. This was the moment James was called to be our Lord's disciple. In Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 and 2, Jesus brought Peter, James, and his brother John up on the high mountain 
There, the disciples saw Jesus transfigured and speak with Moses and Elijah. Also, Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 38, provide a scene where Jesus went to a place called Gethsemane. Before he carried the cross, he then took with him Peter, James, and John to another place, leaving other disciples. This indicates that John's brother James was one of the disciples whom Jesus trusted and loved more. Regrettably, after Jesus ascended into heaven, he suffered martyrdom so early that he didn't have time to carry out his ministry as an apostle. We read in Acts chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Now about the time Herod the king laid hands on some who belonged to the church in order to mistreat them, and he had James the brother of John put to death with the sword. As said in the verses, John's brother James, who was beloved by Jesus, died a martyr early on, so he couldn't serve as a pillar in the church of Jerusalem like Peter and John did. As King Herod saw the Jews rejoicing over James' death, he had Peter arrested and imprisoned. He intended to bring him out before the people after the Passover. But from Acts uh, chapter 12, verse 4 onward, we find that Father God sent His angel to Peter to unfasten his chains and lead him out of the iron gate that opened by itself. While such extraordinary things were going on, Peter thought he was seeing a vision. As he came to himself, he realized that God had sent his angel to rescue him from Herod and from all that the Jews were expecting. He then made his way to the house of Mary, the mother of John. People who were gathered at her house were amazed to see Peter. Acts chapter 12 verse 17 reads, But motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had led him out of the prison, and he said, Report these things to James and the brethren. Then he left and went to another place. Here, we see the third person named James from the fact that the Apostle Peter told people to report his words to James. We can infer that James was a significant leader in the Church of Jerusalem. Peter, uh, who was the Lord's chief disciple, specifically mentioned the name so there's no doubt this James is the one who was reputed to be a pillar. He was neither the son of Alphaeus nor the brother of John who suffered martyrdom early on. Thus, we can ascertain that he was James who was Jesus' younger brother. We read in Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, Is not this uh, the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? The verse indicates that James was the first son born to Jesus' mother Mary. We can speculate that there wasn't a big age difference between Jesus and him and that he grew up with Jesus. Yet, before Jesus died on the cross and resurrected, James couldn't believe in him despite seeing his ministry. As John chapter 7 verse 5 says, For not even his brothers were believing in him. Even Jesus' family members didn't believe in him. Yet, this wasn't the case after they witnessed Jesus' resurrection. 
After Jesus finished his three-year public ministry and died on the cross, Jesus' disciples and his followers might have lost all their hope in him and felt empty and dejected. But just as Jesus foretold his disciples, he resurrected in three days after his death. Then he went on to live 40 more days days on earth, planning hope for resurrection and heaven in their hearts. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 5 through 8, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James. And James chapter 1 verse 1 says, James, a bond servant of God and the Lord of Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Apostle Paul confesses in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul called as an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. But James didn't call himself an apostle, but a bond servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus, when Jesus appeared to the twelve disciples, the two James, who were John's brother and Alphaeus' son, were among them. So the James in the verse, then he appeared to James, doesn't refer to either John's brother or Alphaeus' son but it signifies Jesus' younger brother, James. Knowing that James would be used as a pillar, Jesus appeared to him in person. After Jesus' disciples and his believers saw him ascending into heaven after his resurrection, they were filled up with the hope for his coming. Coming down from the Mount of Olives, they devoted themselves to prayer. Acts chapter 1 verse 14 says, These all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer, along with women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. After Jesus' brothers, including James, who couldn't believe in him, witnessed his resurrection and ascension, they no longer saw Jesus as their biological brother, but firmly believed in him to be their savior, or Messiah. And they figured out why their mother Mary served Jesus with all of her sincerity. Their hearts became fervent, so they devoted themselves to prayer along with her. They realized that Jesus, whom their mother wholeheartedly loved and served, wasn't just their biological brother, but their Savior. They had such firm beliefs. Among Jesus' brothers, James was the eldest, so there, so there wasn't a big age difference with him and Jesus. Having grown up with Jesus and watched him close by, he must have been so inspired when he found that he was the Messiah. Thereafter, when the Lord's apostles carried out their ministry in different regions, He protected the Church of Jerusalem as its leader. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, we find that <coughs> Then three years after I went up to Jerusalem to become acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days, but I didn't see any other of the apostles except James, the Lord's brother. After Paul met Jesus, after three years in three years after Paul met Jesus, Paul met James because it had been only three years since Paul met the Lord on his way to Damascus, he didn't know well about his ministry. So, even when he met James at the Church of Jerusalem, presumably, he didn't have a deep conversation about the ministry. But in Galatians chapter 2, verse 1, we find that 14 years after his mission trip, he went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and Titus. 
And 바나바와 디도를 데리고 다시 예루살렘에 올라갔다고 기록되어 있으며 And Galatians chapter 2 verse 9 says Recognizing the grace that had been given to me James and Cephas and John who are reputed to be pillars gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship As Paul was greatly used by God as an apostle to the Gentiles he got to the level where he could have a spiritual talk with James, the leader of the Jerusalem church. Here are more examples showing how significant James' ministry uh, was in the church of Jerusalem. Acts chapter 15 verses 1 and 2 read, Some men came down from Judea and began teaching the brethren, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And when Paul and Barnabas had great dissension and debate with them, the brethren determined that Paul and Barnabas and some others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders concerning this issue. The Jews and the Pharisees who accepted the Lord believed Him to be the Messiah, yet having strictly kept the law of Moses, they believe that anyone who is not circumcised will be cut off from the people of God. In Genesis chapter 17 verses 9 through 14, God gave His words a covenant to Abraham. He ordered that every male among the people be circumcised when he is eight years old, uh, eight days old. Also, He warned that whoever is not circumcised would be cut off from His people for violating His covenant. So, so they believe that those who are not circumcised will not be saved. So there were disputes. So after Jesus' resurrection, when people were in transition between the Old and the New Testament times, there were debates on the circumcision and the salvation of the Gentiles. Initially, even the Apostle Peter was reluctant to meet the Gentiles. As we find in Acts chapter 10 verses 43 through 46, when he visited Cornelius the centurion and proclaimed Jesus as the Savior, all people there believed in him. As the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who listened to his message, the circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the Gentiles and that they spoke with tongues and exalted God. Later on, Peter stated in Acts chapter 15 verses 7 through 11, Brethren, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you that by my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, testified to them giving them the Holy Spirit just as He also did to us. And He made no distinction between us and them cleansing their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why do you put God to the test by placing upon the neck of the disciples a yoke, which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear, but we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, in the same way as they also are. Then the entire crowd became silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul. They talked about signs and wonders God had manifested through them among the Gentiles. As they finished, James answered, saying, Brethren, listen to me. He was such a confident uh, leader. He went on to say, Simeon has related how God first concerned himself about taking from among the Gentiles a people for his name. With this, with this the words of the prophets agree. Then James reminded people that it agreed with the words of the prophets, which said that Gentiles would seek the Lord, who makes things known from long ago. 
James went on to say, Therefore, it is my judgment that we do not trouble those who are turning to God from, uh, from among the Gentiles, but that we write to them that they abstain from things contaminated by idols and from fornication and from what is strangled and from blood. Like this, he resolved the issue with his clear answer. It shows that James had such wisdom and understanding. When the Gentiles read his message, they rejoiced because of the encouraging words. From these scenes from the Bible, we can ascertain how significant James' ministry was in the Church of Jerusalem. Regarding the death of James, who was the leader of Church of Jerusalem, it has been said that he died a martyr around 62 AD. Knowing very well about the life of Jesus, James boldly proclaimed about his resurrection more than anyone. Thus, the Pharisees reportedly detested his preaching most. So, those who opposed the Christ hated James and finally had him killed by pushing him off the temple. The moment he breathed his last, he prayed, Lord, please forgive them because they do not, do not know what they are doing. Which reminds us of Jesus hung on the cross. So, let us delve more into James, Jesus' brother who died a martyr, from the fact that he became a pillar in the Church of Jerusalem in such a short period of time, we can, <coughs> we can infer that he was excellent in spiritual wisdom and understanding and that he was a man equipped with leadership and capable of inspire, inspiring people. And James was also the author of the book of James. Uh, living in the transition from the Old to the New Testament time, he pointed out how the gospel of Jesus Christ differ from the traditions of the Jews. Emphasizing that the Lord's coming was near, he urged the believers to stay patient and alert in prayer, which demonstrates that he was a man of prayer. From the book of James, we see many words of reproach. We also find the words like all or perfect many times. Uh, today's passage, James chapter 1, verses 2-4 through four say, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. In these verses alone, we hear the word all or perfect three times. And also James chapter 2 verse 22 tells us, you see that faith was working with his works and as a result of the works, faith was perfected. James chapter 3 verse 2 also reminds us, for we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body as well. When Jesus preached on a mountain, he said, Therefore, you are to be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. I think, as a person who watched Jesus' life close by, James recalled all what he did and wrote the book of James. In the book, he challenged the believers to consider it all joy in various trials, let endurance have its perfect result, uh, fruit, and be perfect and complete, like in nothing. The dictionary defines perfect as conforming absolutely to the description or definition of an ideal type. 
brothers and sisters, our, our beloved shepherd earnestly desires, uh, wants us to become men of whole spirit with a sincere heart and perfect faith. Even now, he is silently walking the way of suffering. Believing and trusting the vision Father God has presented to this church, we've prayed and we've also witnessed and experienced its fruit so far. Briefly going through this time of trials, if you find yourself falling into despair or losing faith or trust, it demonstrates that you haven't placed perfect trust in the words of Father God, the Lord and the Shepherd. Perfect trust never fails according to situations. Even though we may, uh, we may face obstacles on our way, our trust itself shouldn't change. Our Father God sent our Shepherd to this earth in this end time. He's always guided the Shepherd's sheep to green pastures and beside quiet waters. With His love, He has permitted this trial a blessing. So, with what kind of heart are you overcoming this trial? Just as James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 remind us, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and that let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. We have to consider it all joy and perfectly endure as the shepherd's beloved sheep. God set up Paul as the apostle to the Gentiles and Peter and John as apostles to the Jews in his providence of spreading the gospel throughout Israel and to all the earth. Actually, I didn't have much knowledge about James who was set up as the leader of the Church of Jerusalem. But I was inspired as I again read the book of James. This book is James's letter to the Jewish people who had converted from Judaism to Christianity and faced persecutions as a result. Some people compare this book to Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, while others call it the Proverbs of the New Testament. Because the book emphasizes these, there have been controversies over whether it should have been included in the canon of Scripture. Anyways, the book makes it clear that faith which is not accompanied with these can never be true faith. Brothers and sisters, this trial of blessing we are going through is time of great blessing permitted by Father God. This is time that we should rejoice and give thanks. And then, the days we will see our senior pastor is coming near. All mommy members, we, mommy members, have the blessing of church in Philadelphia. He who overcomes, I will make a I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. In other words, he who overcomes will be given the key to New Jerusalem and be blessed with great rewards. As today's passage says, James, who was reputed to be a pillar, was excellent in spiritual wisdom and understanding, equipped with leadership, and capable of inspiring people. That's how he was set up as the head of the Church of Jerusalem. Father God already knew the depths of his James's heart and chose him from the house of the moment he realized that Jesus was the one who came as the Messiah, he must have been reminded of how he conducted himself and his beautiful deeds of faith and obedience must have gone through his mind. He must have been filled with inspiration, grace, and passion. Everything he remembered about Jesus must brought him awakening faith and wisdom. Brothers and sisters, Father God has also granted the same kind of grace to this church. 
While the, while the shepherd is not with us, I had time to ponder over Pastor Sujin Lee, the acting senior pastor. Growing up by the shepherd's side, keeping in mind the words of truth from the shepherd and obeying them, she gained wisdom, understanding, and spiritual leadership. Uh, thus, Father God called her to become a servant of God's power and the president of Pastors Association, whom all MAMI members consider a pillar. While the church is in trouble, she can, hand, she can uh, deal with the situations, figuring out the shepherd's heart more than anyone. It's because she has witnessed, felt, and experienced the shepherd's truthfulness and his love from her childhood. The same goes for Mrs. Bong Lim Lee and her daughter pastors. I once again give thanks to Mrs. Bong Lim Lee, who's been our mother of prayer and of great help to the shepherd. I also I give thanks to all church leaders. Brothers and sisters, I pray that all of you will be used will be used as a pillar for the kingdom of God. I'd like to add one more word. Please pray for us. So during the New Year holiday, I wish you have a happy time during the holiday. Thank you. Let's reflect on today's message in our prayer. Kidungachi 우리 성도들도 함께 기둥과 지역에는 하나님의 일꾼들로 쓰임 받기를 원하여 함께 말씀을 나누어 보았습니다. 이 말씀을 말씀을 상고하는 시간이 되게 하시고 목자의 기도 가운데 공고 킨샤다 만민께 모든 문제를 잘 풀으시도 행복한 아프리카 선교 축복하신 아버지께 감사드리오니 새 하나님이 주신 은혜와 축복이 귀한 제단님도 축복하여 주옵소서 우리 주 예수 그리스도로 In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. We'll receive the prayer for the sick. Please lay your hands on the sick parts or weak parts of your body and receive the prayer. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV in branch churches and local sanctuaries, and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart, drive away negative thoughts and thought, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all the uh, entrails, joints, nerves, tissues, and cells, whatever the sick part may be, Burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and viruses, and infirmities go away. Light come. Please scorch all the terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral poxy, high or low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problem, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of uh, polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs, back, ache, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened, get up, walk, and leap. 
Let the eyes see well, let the ears heal well. Let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents, fix their broken bones, restore, the, restore them from burns, let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no scar left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves, tissues, and cells be regenerated. Bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessings of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the rulers of the power of the, the air, the ev evil forces of heavenly places, and their servants, go away. Go away, evil, unclean, false, and deceitful spirits, separating spirits, and all forces of darkness. Loosen the bones of weakness. Darkness, go away. Light, come. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them, and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week, and bless them to lead a pro prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery words of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect our, your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give the students wisdom and understanding, and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God saying, I've met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.